Good afternoon, everyone. This is Tara with Handmade by Tara. And today I'm going to do something a little different. You've never seen me spin yarn. Um, I have been spinning since, well, it's been 10 years now, actually, 10 years in April. And um, I absolutely love the hobby and I love the finished product. But today I'm going to be spinning Blue, Fla Blue Face Luster wool. And this wool was purchased from uh, Tanya Cottle of Flannel Cakes Fiber here in Powhatan. It, I, my favorite fiber is Blue Face Luster because it is incredibly soft and it's got a long hair length, what they call staple length. Now, if you're just joining me, be sure to say hi so I know you're here. And if you think somebody would be interested in watching something like this, please let them know or let your friends know that I'm, I'm live with spinning fiber. I'm making it into yarn on a spinning wheel. So this is what I'll be doing today. First thing I do is I open up the, the um, it's called top. What this is, is fiber is combed out so it's all in the same direction. It's the, my favorite product to use when I'm spinning yarn. And what I'm spinning on is an Ashford traditional Saxon or Saxony, Saxon spinning wheel. Saxon style, I guess. Um, that means it's horizontal. Castle style is vertical. And what I'm doing right now is just splitting my fiber up into smaller usable sections. And then I try to keep them in the same direction. So when I'm done spinning, I will be able to have something that'll be a pretty uh, continuous colorway. And if you're late to coming on my live, be sure to get, I guess there's a button that you can click to say you want to be reminded when I go live. So you can follow when I go live. What I'm doing now is I'm just putting my, this is my leader string, and I'm putting it onto my, from my bobbin through my whirl. And this is how you get started. Maybe. And again, if you're just step, jumping on, say hi. And what I'm doing now is just going to add my yarn, my fiber onto my leader. I have not spun since January, so this will be fun. And as I spin, the fiber gets pulled in, or the yarn gets pulled in. What I'm doing is I'm pulling the fibers out of my right hand and guide him in with my left. And as I spin, I don't know the actual ratio, but every time the big wheel spins once, the little wheel spins a certain number of times as well. But it's just so relaxing to sit and spin on a spinning wheel. I'm sorry I didn't go on live yesterday. I was out at our land. If you saw my picture from yesterday, I had we had about 15 acres that we have to mow, so my husband and I did it together. I did a 
I had a big pool behind mower, and he had a riding. He did the smaller areas, I did the big areas. But I, the field that I took the picture of yesterday is about eight to 10 acres. Hi Raven, I'm so glad you able, were able to join us. So what I'm doing here is I am spinning blue face Lester fiber. Blue face Lester is a sheep and I absolutely love yarn spun from blue face Lester. And what I'm doing is I'm just pulling the fibers out of my right hand guiding them into the whirl and then onto the bobbin. Let me know if you have any questions. So back to yesterday, um, we spun, or we, <laughs> we mowed for about six hours and I'd say we got 99% of the property mode. I was flying. And we I have a Kawasaki mule. Hi Diane! It is fascinating to watch. And I'm using the mule and I, my, I stopped the mower. I have a pull behind mower, it's 60 inches wide. Stopped the mower and I must have stopped it the wrong way because I threw a belt. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to move over one hook to allow it to go onto the bottom smoothly. And so when I must have turned off the mower wrong, I blew the belt and then I had to figure out how to fix it. So I got my handy dandy tools out and I pulled the cover off where the belts were and tried to figure out how it all worked. And I did. I burned my arm in the process. Got a nice big burn on my arm. And this morning I noticed that it was not looking good so I'm going to have to go get some medicine for it. Later on today, head over to the store and see if I can get something for burn cream. If anybody knows a good burn cream, I'd appreciate it. I don't want this to get infected. So basically, I'm just pulling the fibers out of my right hand and just directing them in with the left. And I'm just slowly working my way through this fiber. What I have right here is it's a four ounce uh, top. Top means that it's fiber that's been combed. Hi, Gloria. <laughs> of course, I'm wearing my My eBooth shirt. I love My eBooth. Gloria is the owner and operator of My eBooth and she is wonderful. If you sell products, I'm trying to get my screen so I can actually see the notes that people are saying. If, if you sell products and want an opportunity to sell on something other than Etsy, I definitely recommend my eBooth because you can join my eBooth for free. I'm sorry, I'm trying to get my screen back up to the way it should be so I can see what I'm doing here. There we go. Um, and you can join my eBooth for free. You can list up to 25 items on my eBooth for free. Now that's just 25 listings. Now a listing can be variables. So if you go onto my website, I have a listing for masks. And within masks, you have the choice. Do you want a toggle style or behind the ear style? And so with that, one listing, I have all my different masks listed. And Gloria is wonderful enough to offer this 
for free for up to 25 products. And I started with her in March. And it's easy to set up a booth and at your online store. It's the same as Etsy, just a <laughs> much easier, I think easier to navigate. You don't get lost on there. And it is, Gloria is wonderful to work with. I just, I can't say enough good things about it. And she's also offering to people who have a booth on my e-booth. You can also do virtual lives every other week on a Saturday from 10 to 10. And she's working right now to get it so you can go to the web, so people can go to the website and see the lives from the website. They don't even have to be on Facebook or in the Facebook group, which is fabulous. I'm so excited that she's offering that. So check out myebooth.com. Check out Handmade by Tara on myebooth.com. And you can see all the wonderful artisans out there. And you'll be really happy that you did. I, speaking of my e-booth, I have added, I had done six scars on, sad, or on Sunday. One sold right away when I did a video of the products finished. So I put the other five up on my e-booth so people can check those out. They were number, I want to say it's 35 to 39 are the ones. And they're just listed as water marble. Hint, what is handcrafted water marble uh, soap scarves. And all the products on my booth offer free shipping and sales tax is included on my prices. So the price you pay is the price you the price you see is the price you're going to pay. There's no extra cost anywhere. I figured that was the easiest way for people to use my site, and they know exactly what they're going to pay. And you can pay with credit card. You can also, if you want something custom made. I can do that as well. I had somebody actually send me yesterday, he wants me to make a sloth hat. So I'm going to be making a sloth hat in the near future. So basically I am just pulling the fiber out of my right hand and directing it into the bobbin. And you're starting to see it on the bobbin now. I'm directing it onto the bobbin. And I periodically stop it and move the thread to the next level or next hook. So therefore I won't have a bunch of bumps and it'll, it'll go more smoothly onto the bobbin. And yes, Diane, spinning is very relaxing. You can really get yourself into a zone. And I wish I had more time to do it. I'm in a spinning guild called Clothos Hand Spinners. And we meet every month, but since COVID, we have not been meeting. And I can only meet usually like six months out of the 12 months because the other six months I'm doing shows. And so I really missed my spring with my Clothos hand spinners because that's usually the only time I actually take time to spin. And as I said, the big wheel for every rotation that does, the smaller wheel does a lot more. I don't know exact ratio. 
I've never cared about that kind of stuff. I don't really need to worry about that. As long as it's doing its job, I don't care. But this is called a Saxony wheel because it's a horizontal. I also have a castle wheel, which the big wheel is on the bottom and everything. This stuff is on the top. Um, and that's called, a, I have a Kromsky Mazurka for that. And that one, I call her my chatty Kathy because I can't seem to quiet that wheel down. It likes to make a lot of noise, so I don't think it would be very good for doing a video. But she likes to talk a lot. And yes, spinners name their wheels. <laughs> and I never named this one. It's just my Ashford Traditional. But the other one I named Petrolana because that's named after my great-grandmother from Czechoslovakia. And I just thought it was such a pretty name. So my other wheel is named Petrolana. And I hope you can see what I'm doing. I'm just separating and pulling the fibers out and then spinning in. If I'm concentrated and just spinning, not doing anything else, I could do four ounces in a couple hours. And what I did, when I first started doing this here, I split that four ounces down the middle, lengthwise. And when you split lengthwise, that keeps the colors in the same sequence. And then one of the it's halves, I split that in half again, and that's what I'm spinning on right now. I like to do that. It's a modified fractal spin, and when I ply it, I'll do one bobbin of the half, and then the other bobbin of the two quarters. And so that makes long color repeats on one, and short color repeats on the other. But when you when you spin them to ply them, it makes such a beautiful barber pole effect. And I just love how it blends from one color to the next to the next. And that's why I like to do my modified fractal spinning. And now plying. Plying is when you take however th many threads you have, which means how many bobbins you have, and you just spin them in the opposite direction together. So basically what I'm doing right now is I am putting energy into the, the uh, thread because I'm spinning in the clockwise direction. And then when I go to ply, I'll hold both of those threads that were in the clockwise direction, and I will put them in a counter, I will spin them back on themselves in a counterclockwise direction. And my finished yarn will probably be a light fingering weight, maybe. Make sure I've got Oh, I'm missing a lot of comments here. I don't know why my screen's not going down for me. I am not good with my left hand, and I'm trying to do this with my left hand. And this is not working very well. Raven, I do recommend that you try my e-booth. I think you would like it. Are you twisting the wool or holding it? I am holding the wool. I'm sorry, I'm trying to read from a distance. I'm holding the wool with my right hand. And then I'm just pulling it, pulling a few threads or through a few 
hairs or fibers out with my left. So I'm just pulling. So I pull, pinch, pull, pinch, pull with my left, pull. And every time I'm pulling with my left, I let the, the right hand release so the fibers can come out of my right hand. What do you do, or what do you plan on making with it when you're done with it? I never know what I'm going to make. Usually I like to make, with my hand spun, I like to make um, shawls. Because I love how they look all knit up. And I prefer knit over crochet for my shawls with hand spun. Because I do such a fine yarn. I do a light fingering weight. Hi Dawn, how are you? I think Dawn has seen this done a couple of times. She's one of, she's a friend and she's also a vendor at one of my, at my Powhatan's Festival of Fiber, which of course we had to cancel this year. So she's seen this done a lot. <laughs> yeah, and Powhatan's Festival of Fiber, that's an interesting event. It is a fun, filled day where people can enjoy the fiber arts. Dawn is a tatter and oh, she does such amazing work. And if you've never seen tatting, you need to look it up because Dawn, Dawn's work is absolutely gorgeous. She does earrings and she has, I believe she has kits that she so you, you a tatting kit so you can tat yourself. But tatting is an ancient or not ancient an old form of lace knitting or lace work. So you know those old dresses with the pretty collars? Those were all tatted. The lace was all tatted. And so Dawn is one of the vendors at the Fiber Festival. And we are always the last weekend in April. And we have people, the, the vendors are required to sell products made from natural fiber or products used in fiber processing. So I'm the vendor coordinator, so I am not a vendor. I don't have time to be a vendor there. It is a very, very busy day for me. And we have 75, 80 vendors in there on a big three-acre field. We have sheep shearing. You can pet some alpacas. We have sheepdog demonstrations. Lots of vendors, lots of good food and demonstrations. And this year I was going to be demonstrating my silk water marbling. And so I guess that'll just wait till next year. But that's a, that's a fun event for the whole family, the last weekend in April. And we have people that come from all over. Our vendors as far as New Jersey, and Maryland, and Pennsylvania, North Carolina, West Virginia, and of course Virginia. And then our customers, they come from all over. I mean, we've, had, we've actually had customers coming from California, which I don't believe they were actually coming to the festival. They just happened to be in town and they, they happened to be from California. Oh, I'm sorry you missed it. Next year, put it on your calendar now, Raven, next year. And then coming up, let's see, on July 25th and 26th, I will be hosting a show at Westchester Commons in Midlothian, Virginia. And I will be a vendor there. This is going to be, it's called Christmas in July. And all the vendors that we have there are required to have uh, products made by them. No resellers and nobody representing somebody else. So. 
You won't have somebody who's bought stuff from Indonesia or whatever. It will be the person selling will be the person who's made it. Um, I will be there Saturday, Sunday, 25th and 26th of July. Um, on the 25th, I'm not sure exactly what's going to happen. Uh, my son's graduation has been moved to the 25th of July. So I might have to close my booth down, down for a little while and let Eric cover everything up unless my girlfriend can cover for, <coughs> excuse me, cover for me. Otherwise, I'll just cover everything up and leave a so note say, sorry, I missed you. My son's graduating. So things we have to make we have to make adjustments. I'm just glad they're doing something for their graduation. Thank you, Don. I appreciate that. I, I I put a lot of work into the fiber festival, and I think the vendors are pretty happy about it, and I think the the visitors are very happy with it as well. So, and it was very hard for us to cancel. I think we made the right decision. So, I mean, it is what it is. We have to just move on, and I do have to get applications made up for next year. I have even, <laughs> normally I had that all ready for the festival, and I didn't have it, because we didn't have the festival. Everything got put on the side, and I've been busy doing these lives. <laughs> And had a lot of other stuff going on as well. Now, let's say I'm spinning away here and my fiber breaks. Look at that. What am I going to do? Huh. So, you just pick it up, lay it on there, and Start spinning again, and it will catch those fibers together. Oh, I'm so glad you're going to be able to come in July, Raven. That'll be cool to see you. I haven't seen you in so long. I feel like I'm missing everybody. You know, I'm <laughs> it's the weirdest thing. I miss hugs. <laughs> I miss hugs. I really, really, truly miss hugs. I wish I could hug everybody. Um, you know, it's just, it's a weird time that we live in right now. Well, we'll get through all this, but boy, it's been weird. Now, I'm a thin spinner. I like to spin fine yarn. Um, I could even do finer, but I don't want to. I've never been able to spin thick, so I, you'll never see me making a bulky yarn by spin. It's always going to be a two or three ply. Maximum would be maybe a sport weight, but more likely a fingering weight. And that's just how I spin. And they say once you go thin, you can't figure out how to do thick again. And it's true. I've never, I've never done thick. But I've always been the type, when you spend good money on fiber. And fiber can cost you upwards to 30 or $40 for four ounces, depending on the fiber. And when you spend that much money on it, I like to get as much bang for my buck as possible. And so, I guess that's why I do thin, because I want to be able to, I want to get as many yards out of these four ounces as I can. And, and this will probably net me uh, about 400 yards, depending on the thickness, 200 to 400 yards. And that can make a nice little shawlette, a lace, lacy shawlette. It is just so relaxing. 
moment to move. You see how it's filling up nicely? If you have any other questions about spinning, let me know. I keep looking, I have a screen. I have a screen that is like behind the camera, so at an angle, so I keep looking off to the side and that's what I'm looking at. I had a different setup this morning to do this with my laptop, but for some reason my laptop will not let me, I bought a new battery for it, and the battery will charge as long as I'm not using it. If I'm using it, the charger won't work. And then it starts just killing the battery faster than if I just use the battery outright. But I don't know how long I'm going to be on live. So I figured I'd go back into my office and use my PC that's a static connection. How I'm just pull and release. And again, this is how I spin. Everybody has their own way of spinning. Just like knitting or crochet or water marbling. This fiber is dyed before spinning. I prefer having my fiber dyed before spinning because I like how the colors blend. It's not so drastic as changes of, of colors. And so I like to have my fiber dyed before I spin it and then choose what kind of dyeing or spinning I want to do. Now what I did here was I did a fractal spin. So one, one half of it is going to be short with color repeats and one half of the other bobbin is going to be long color repeats. And doing it that way it will give a nice barber pole effect when I spin it or when I apply it. Now if I wanted to have long color repeats for the whole thing, I would do one, I would leave it all as one solid piece and then just spin from the salad piece. I'd have to stretch it out a little bit to fluff it up and make it easier to pull out. But then I would be able to do long color repeats. And if I want to keep those color repeats continuous, I would do a different plying technique, which would be called chain plying, which makes a three ply yarn out of one strand of yarn or one strand of thread, I guess you'd call it. And that would give me long color repeats even when it's plied. I've done chain plying before. It's a definitely a rhythm you have to get into. But it is, it's got its place but I prefer shorter repeats and blending versus long colorways. So I prefer to do the fractal spinning, which is what I'm doing here. It's such a nice day out. My husband and son went out to the land today again to fool around out there. So I've got the house to myself. And it's a perfect quiet day to do spinning. I might do, I might pull out my big loom. I haven't used it yet. I might pull that out, clean it up because I, I bought it used. And get that warped. Try, try maybe making a shawl, woven shawl. I haven't used that one yet, so I'm curious to see how it goes. 
that one will have to take a lot of yarn, so I think I'll, I've, get some, I've got some cones of yarn that I'll use for that. Also crocheting. I don't know if you all seen it on Facebook. People have been posting this. It's kind of a mixture of a shawl and a scarf with pockets on it. I'm going to give that one a try and see if I like making it. And if I do, then I'll make more. But it also, I'm I'm an instant gratification person, so I may not. <laughs> It takes a lot longer. It's kind of like making a blanket. And I've never been crazy about making blankets. But some people love doing them. But it's like 36 rows or something like that. And I'm, I'm row like nine. <laughs> It's 157 stitches long. So we'll see how it goes. Oh, you're making dishcloths. Let's see, you're knitting and crocheting today. Good. Fiance is at work. Fiance? I didn't, I remember a post that you said about colors, but I'm like, I didn't even know she was engaged. How exciting. When is the big day? And what does he do that he's working on a Sunday? And what's going on with your job situation, Raven, since are you going to... Are, have they given you guys guidance as to what's going to be happening in the fall? You said dinner's in the crock pot. What's for dinner? <laughs> I, uh, right before the live, I took out some chicken and apple sausage and some rolls. So I think I'm going to make that. And I'm going to do what I call Endicott potatoes, which are fried potatoes. And Endicott's my hometown. It's something my dad always made. He'd always make a deal. You peel and I'll cook. So whenever I bake my Endicott potatoes, my family loves them. And they remind me of dad. Because we would do that. Once in a while, it's always a treat when we do Endicott potatoes. And if you're from Endicott, they're just fried potatoes. <laughs> I'm holding my left leg out. I'm getting pain in my left leg from being on the mule so long yesterday my legs were a little cramped up but I hope you can see what I'm doing here with the spinning She named it Okra Coke. That's yeah, a one of a kind colorway, so can't be duplicated. Just like my scarves. And I've made some more caught in the act hats. 
I'll have those available if anybody's interested. I did. They're not on my website as of yet. I'm waiting on that yet. Um, but you can always contact me. I'll probably take a picture of them. I think I've got four of them finished right now. I might get three. I can't remember. But I'll, I'll post pictures of the three of the ones that I have. And if you're interested, you can always get that. Or I can do custom colors as well. And yes, the Cotley Act is a fornicating deer. And I'm just periodically moving the thread along the hooks to work it, it's, work it down the bobbin. Oh, produce manager. Nice. And you never even told me you were engaged. Oh. <laughs> When's the big day? Chicken and gravy in the crock pot, yum. No, chicken and gravy in the crock pot, okay. I discovered that I do not like my cook chicken cooked longer than four hours in the crock pot. Have you had luck doing it longer? reason why I ask is if you do crock pot, if you leave for work, you can't, I mean, chicken just can't be in the crock pot for eight hours as far, I had, even I said on low, I found it overcooked. So if you had luck doing it for longer periods of time, or do you have to do it on a day that you're going to be there for half the day? guide here and it will tell me how many wraps per inch. I just lay the thread over top of these lines. So this one says it's 28 threads per or wraps per inch. So if I double that, if I do a two ply, that would make 14 wraps per inch. Now the question is what is wraps per inch? 14 wraps per inch come out to be? Yeah, light finger away. Depends on if you want the chicken to be more one piece or shredded. Ah, that's the trick. I just found when I cooked the chicken in the crock pot, if I did it for longer and even shredded it, it almost felt like the chicken was over processed or something. Maybe that whatever juice, whatever flavoring I had in there made it too intense or something. I don't know what it is. It didn't taste like chicken as much anymore to me. Well, maybe that was just the combination I did. So I've been trying to, <laughs> a couple of years ago, I did those crock pot freezer meals. Oh my gosh, that's so much fun. six hours for, or is that eight hours for four breasts? Okay. And if they're thick breasts, that would probably be okay. And you're shredding it. I found a recipe. It was a balsamic chicken. It was four hours in the crock pot. Oh, it was so good. I love balsamic chicken. I love balsamic anything. Pork, chicken, cookie, anything with balsamic is so good. Okay, we 
is ready to slip. Yep. And again, I'm just moving the thread down the line. Raven, if you decide you do want to open my booth, my e booth, and you need some guidance, I'll be happy to help you. And Gloria is wonderful if you have questions as well. And not many sites can you actually make a phone call and actually talk to the owner. <laughs> which is kind of cool, or message her on Facebook, or send an email and you hear back quickly. I don't know how it is with Etsy or any of those, but I think Gloria has found a good niche. And you're not required to accept payments on their website either. You could use your own. Oh, you've got one of those fancy smancy crack pots. Mine actually has to turn. Mine doesn't have a timer on it. So I have to actually be there. I guess if you had a timer on it, it would be easier. It would automatically switch over to warm if, you, if it was done with the time. I just, I went with the basic. My son gave it to me and I love it. I use it all the time. I made a crock pot broccoli and cheese soup. Oh, it is so good. I've been told it gives Panera a run for its money. You've been talking about with your friend about posting stuff online. I'll tell you, without doing, being able to do craft shows, online is the way you need to go. It's I don't know what's going to happen in the fall. I mean, the fall is when we have our, all of our shows, and are we going to be allowed to have them? Or are they going to cancel because they're afraid to take the risk? And I don't... I mean, that's, that's my bread and butter time. That's when I make my sales, is in the fall. So that's why I jumped on to... Well, actually, I jumped on to my e-booth before we, the pandemic hit. Um, actually a couple weeks before it just I mean it was that quick but um, I found when I found my e-booth I thought it was the perfect fit for me because Etsy's gotten so big that you get lost in there and so if you're looking for a hat you're going to be one of thousands and thousands of vendors that sell hats. But on my e-booth, you don't have as many to compete against. And the prices are affordable. Up to 25 listings, I said listings, is free. Up to 50 listings is $9.99 a month. There's no listing fee. There's no commission. And Gloria does a great job promoting. 
She's always coming up with new list, new posts and stuff like that. So I think it's been a great addition to my business. I for the longest time I did a square store. And I found it so cumbersome to use. It just was never very easy to navigate for me. And I don't know how it was on the customer end, but on, on the, the vendor end, it was very difficult. And so when I when I jumped on and I beat my e booth, it was so easy. March thirteenth, two thousand twenty one. Oh, I hope you can get in. I'm so happy for you. Sometimes you get little nips in there, chunks of fiber that you don't want. And I didn't want that in there. And that's just trash. So I'm going to just lay it on top. Oh, got to move this down anyways. And I'm going to keep spinning. putting my yarn on my booth as well. I'm not sure if people would be interested in buying yarn without being able to touch it. yourself getting into rhythm and you kind of lose yourself in your thoughts and it's mesmerizing think the spinning should I do more lives of spinning so you can see the process just like I did with the scarf maybe I can do lives where I'm just spinning this fiber until it's all gone and then plying it until it's a finished product. What do you think? Let me know if you want to continue seeing spinning or if <laughs> you've seen enough. Because <laughs> I don't want people to be bored because it is kind of boring after a while to just sit and watch. Thank you, Raven. I see you wrote a long, I'm going to have to read that long one that she wrote because it just told me to see more and everything, so I'm excited to read what she said. Um, well, thank you about the yarn, and maybe I will put it up. I, I was selling it at shows, and then it just was, was not the direction I was going in anymore um, because there wasn't enough interest at shows to buy hand spun yarn. I'd, have, I'd sell one, one or two here and there, but I didn't sell a lot. So maybe I could do something like that. And put it on my, I could put it on my website. And I was just thinking, okay, if I'm doing the yarn, I should also I've got patterns too. 
And my patterns are available on Ravelry and on my website, but maybe I can add those to my my e-booth. Thinking this through as I'm talking here. I could do them on my e-booth and then get rid of the second listing for just my patterns on, on my website. Or on my, yeah, my website. Not my store, but my website. Hmm. Just got to think about these things. Where do I get the, my materials? Um, sometimes I get them online. There are a ton of indie dyers out there. Uh, this fiber that I'm using here is from a girl here in Powhatan. Flannel cake fiber. Oh, yeah, flannel cake fibers. Um, Tanya Cottle. But you can get them at fiber festivals. You can get them online. There's groups on, on Facebook that you can, fiber artists, you know, that, that vendors are selling. There's a lot of virtual fiber festivals right now. And so you can get them there. And I do know a lot of fiber people because I host the fiber festival. And this fiber that I'm using here is... Uh, blue face Lester and it's been dyed blue face Lester is a breed of sheep that makes a beautiful fiber I it almost has a sheen to it and it's a long staple length I can show you that let's stop let me show you it's got a long staple length when I say staple length is how long the fibers are. Get that chunk out of there. But the staple, it's two and a half, three inches long. And I just think just such a smooth, next to the skin feeling fiber that I just love Blue Face Luster. Um, a lot of people like Merino. I personally do not. I don't find it very fun to spin. It's got a shorter staple length, and I don't find it that comfortable to spin with. But everybody has their own preferences. And some people like the heritage breeds, which are more coarse fiber, but they're not making things for next to the skin. When I spin, most of my things are for either hats, or scarves or, or shawls. Now the hats, they can be a little bit more rustic wool. And I, I do have rustic wool that I use. And then I also use some mixed breeds, which are like Cory Dale or they're cross breeds, I should say, which I can't remember what Cory Dale is a combination of two. Um, they're Shetland. Shetland is a cute little, cute little lamb, or a cute little sheep even. They're a small size sheep. And people ask me if I'm going to get sheep when we move out to the land. And I'm like, ah, I don't know. I mean, we do have a lot of fox and coyotes, and I don't know if I want to be tied down like that. But it'd be kind of fun to have my own fiber. And I think there's some bear. We haven't seen any on the trail cam, but I think there are bear in the area because other people in the area have seen them. So I've been on for about an hour now. So I think I'll be wrapping it up for today. Let me know if you'd like me to continue spinning on this. If you want to just sit and chat and spend some time with me. Um, I don't know. I, what, if, what do people like? Do you like it when I do a sale? You know, showing you my products. Or do you like it when I'm working on something? Let me know because I really... I don't want you to be bored. I want this to be something 
that you want to keep watching. Um, you want to see techniques. You want, like I did a video of how I do my two color knitting. What do you, what do you want to see? Just let me know, please, in the comments or PM me or whatever, because I don't know what would make people want to keep coming back. <laughs> And, I mean, I can do a mixture of both. I could do a couple of featured items and then start working on something. So I just need your opinion. Tell me, tell me what you want to see because I really, I really like doing these lives. I have fun with them. And I enjoy hearing people's comments or seeing people's comments and seeing what they think. But what do they want to see? Just let me know. So I think I'm going to wrap it up for now. Because we're right at an hour now. I'm going to wrap this around here so I hold my spinning. That's all we have left is this little bit of that quarter. So I've almost done a quarter of the four ounces. So I've almost done an ounce. So let me know what you want to see. Um, do you want to see more spinning? Do you want to see me knitting? Do you want to see me crochet? What do you want to see? Um, and Or do you want to see products? What brings you, what makes you want to stop and say hi? So please give me a, give me a message. And um, if you don't, if you haven't done so already, make sure you click that you want to see my live so you want to be followed and notified for my lives and that way you'll be able to you won't miss out when I do go live because I don't always announce that I'm going live last night I announced that I was going to do this today but sometimes it's 10 minutes before I'm like oh I think I'm going to do a live so please let me know and I'm so glad you took an hour out of your Sunday to spend with me thank you so much and we'll see you next week take care